All right, review number 10. Uh, make sure, again, you've tried these first, or at least you try them, pause the video before uh, viewing the solution, all right? One by one, however you want to do it. A spinner is divided into equal sections labeled one to six. If the spinner is spun once, what is the probability it lands on a number that is even or greater than three? There's that keyword or, okay, or. So when we're doing or, it's the probability of event A, which is getting an even number, plus the probability of event B, which is getting a number greater than three. Okay, greater than three. Minus the probability of and. So probability of even and greater than three. So um, it's going to turn this off here because I think it's interfering with this. Okay, so now probability of even is 3 out of 6. There are three evens, okay? Three even numbers, 2, 4, and 6. And then probability of getting a th uh, number greater than 3, there's 4, 5, and 6. There's three of those. Okay, so there's three even numbers and there's three numbers greater than 3. But then the and, the and is the pro of the numbers that are greater than three and even. So the number four and the number six. Okay, so this is the number four and the number six. So there are two, there are two numbers that are both even and greater than three. We have to subtract those. So subtract two, three and three is six minus two is four. So four out of six would be the uh, correct answer, and that reduced down to two thirds. Given the explicit formula, a n equals five times negative two to the n, which is the value of the eighth term? So we're just gonna plug in an eight when it's explicit. You could just do a eight, and that's gonna be five times two, negative two to the eighth. All right, five times negative two to the eighth. Just throw that in your calculator, and it is b. All right. So I just did these ahead of time to save you some time there. What is the value of this? So um, this is not geometric, so we can't use a formula here. We have to actually do each one. 3 plus 6 to the 0. 3 plus 6 to the 1st. 3 plus 6 to the 2nd. 3 plus 6 to the 3rd. 3 plus 6 to the 4th. So that comes out to be 4 plus 9 plus 39 plus 219 plus 1299. All right, and that adds up to 1570. So I just, again, did this ahead of time to save you time on the video. I wanted to get your solutions. Now, to solve a log equation, remember, here's the equal sign. Right down, so this is the left side, this is the right side. You have to combine any logs that are on the same side of the equation. So this is just gonna be one equals. We have to combine these logs, log base 12, and then because it's addition of the logs, we need to multiply what's in the logs. So it's gonna be x plus five times x minus six. That's all in the log. So let's do that x plus 5 times x minus 6 is x squared and then you're gonna go minus you can do a table if you want to and then minus 30 so that combines to negative x right so it's gonna be 1 equals log base 12 of this x squared minus x minus 30 and now I want to solve for x, but I can't solve for x if it's in log form. I need to get it out of log form. I can't just drop the log because I don't have a log over here. So what I need to do is convert to exponential form. Exponential form. The way I do that is taking the base, which is 12. My exponent is 1. 12 to the first equals this. Okay? That's just 12, so I don't even need the 1. 
So track 12. x squared minus x minus 42. Factor x equals 7 and negative 6. Now, 7 is okay. 7 minus 6, 7 plus 5, that works. 7 is good. Negative 6 is not, does not work. If you plug a negative 6 in here, you get negative 6 minus 6, which is minus 12. You can't have a negative in the log. So we do have to reject the negative 6, so my answer is just 7. All right, factoring completely. Factor the expression completely. I'm just going to change colors here just for the sake of changing colors. All right, so pull out a 2x. No, you can't pull out a 2, just an x. Pull out an x. I'm left with 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. And then these are tricky. you got to make sure you test it out. To get 2x squared, I need 2x times x. And then to get 4, it's either 4 times 1 or 2 times 2. And it looks like it's going to be um, 4 and 1 because the reason I knew that is because 2 times 4 is 8. And then this gives you a 1. So this is 8x and 1x, and I know I can get 7x, positive 8x minus 1x gives me uh, 7x. So there's my factors uh, factored completely. Right, it's using summation notation. Okay, so summation. Um, the 3 is on top, so I know it's going to be 3 over. And then on the bottom, I have a relationship where it goes something times something. But this number is one more than this one. That number is one more than that one. That number is one more than that one. So the pattern is, you could use any letter you want. The pattern is K or N, whatever, times K plus 1. All right? And that's K equals, and then I'm going to start with 4, because I want my first number to be 4, and then my last number is going to be 8. And just check that out. If you plug in a 4, it should give you this. You plug in a 5, it gives you, so let me, let, let's go through this real quick. If you plug in a 4, it gives you this. If you plug in a 5, it gives you this. If you plug in a 6, it gives you this. Plug in 7, it gives you that. Plug in 8, it gives you that. If you were thinking you should go to 9, no, because if you go to 9, now I'm going to get 3 over 9 times 10. And I don't want 3 over 9 times 10, so um, I want to stop here, so I do want to stop at 8. All right. Consider the function... f of x equals log base 4 of x plus 2 plus 3. Find f inverse. Remember, this is inverse. Whenever you do an inverse, you switch the x and the y. This is, right now, it's y equals log base 4 of x plus 2 and then plus 3. Switch the x and the y. x equals log base 4 of y plus 2 plus 3. Now, subtract the 3 over, so I'm going to get x minus 3 equals log base 4 of y plus 2. And now I'm going to convert to exponential form. Base 4, 4 to the x minus 3, 4 to the x minus 3 equals y plus 2, and then I need to get y by itself, so I'm going to subtract 2. So I get y equals 4 raised to the x minus 3, and then minus 2. And that's my f inverse. At a country fair, 57% of the visitors try the apple pie, 40% of the visitors try the corn and the cob, and 31% try neither. So. I know my neither is going to go out here. I'm going to put 0 0.31, 0 0.31 out there. What students sometimes mess up is they put 0.57 here. And they put 0 0.40 here. Okay? Now, that's a problem. 
Because if I do that, guess what? I go over one. 57 and 40 is 97 plus 31. That goes over 1.0. Everything's got to add up to 1.0. The reason that happened is it's not this region that's 0.57. It's the whole circle. The whole circle is 0.57. And this whole circle is 0 0.40. So there's, there's an amount that goes in the middle. Some of these people are in here and some of these people are in here. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how many we are over. We are over by, okay, adding, here's the neither, here's the apple pie, and here's the uh, corn and the cob. If I figure out the amount I'm over one, that's the middle amount. So um, that's 97, that's going to be 1.28. So if I get 1.28, uh, that means I am over by 0.28. So uh, I know that the middle section must be 0.28. So now, if I know the middle is 0.28 and I want the whole apple pie circle, I want the whole apple pie circle to add up to 0.57, I need this to be 0.29. See that? So basically what I did was 0.57 minus 0.28. That gives me the 0.29. Just make sure these two regions add up to the total apple pie. And the same thing over here. Total corn on the cob. Total corn on the cob should be 40%. Okay? So 0 0.40, take away the both, take away the middle, is 0.12. So there is the completion of my Venn diagram. Should be 0 0.29, 0 0.28, 0 0.12, 0 0.31. Add all those up, you get 1. Okay, so 0.28 was the middle. If 1,460, 1,460 people visited the fair, how many visitors tried both the apple pie and the corn and the cob? Okay, so 0.28 was the both. 0.28 times 1,460, if I want to get an exact amount of people. And that's going to be 409. Because, again, it's 28%. 28%, if you want to do a percent, you just multiply the decimal value times the total. When on vacation in Florida, 60% of the tourists spend time at the beach. 35% of the tourists go shopping for souvenirs. 21% find time to do both. This time they're giving you the both. But it's the same concept. They're giving you both, so 0.21. That's 0.21. But still, 60% spend time at the beach. That's this entire circle. So this needs to be 0.39. 35% go shopping for souvenirs. That's this whole circle. That's 0.35. So this is 0 0.14. 0 0.14 and 0.21 adds up to 0.35. 0.39 and 0.21 adds up to 0.60. Uh, and then I want to find the outside. So again, everything's got to add up to 1. So I got 0.14, I got 0.21, I got 0.39. That adds up to 0.74. So what's left over is 0.26. 1 minus 0.74 is 0.26. All right, just take away from one. All right, one minus 0.74 is 0.26. That's my neither. Now, I want the probability of the tourists going to the beach or going shopping. So to do the or, okay, I'm going to do the beach, which is 0.5, um, I mean 0.60. The beach is 0.60 plus shopping. 0.35 minus both, minus the both, the and, the intersection. Okay, minus, that's a minus, 0.21. So 0.60 plus 0.35 minus 0.21 gives me 0.26. Okay, 
Okay. 0.26 went to the beach or shopping. Nope. Shopping for souvenirs and minus the both 0.95 and 0.21 is 0.26. Wow. And that is 0.74. All right. A tourist goes to the beach but does not go shopping. Okay, tourist goes to the beach but does not go shopping. Um, what the, it's probably that. So beach but not shopping, that's got to be outside the shopping circle. So beach, beach but not shopping is this right here. That's beach but not shopping. That's, remember we did shaded, shaded the circles, beach but not shopping, so that was 0.39. I know I just, I know I just uh, uncolored it, but 0.39, all right? Christmas circle. Are the events spend time at the beach and go shopping for souvenirs independent and justify using probabilities? All right, so to figure out if it's independent, we have to do the probability of A, or well in this case the probability of S, times the probability of B, and that's got to equal the probability of S and B. And we know these. They're all in here. Okay, Probability of S is 0.35. The probability of B is 0.60. And the probability of S and B is 0.21. So if you multiply the individual probabilities, if that equals the and, which is we know is 0.21, if it equals that, then it is independent. And if, if you do put that in your calculator, it does come out to be 0.21. All right. Yes, they are, uh, we're just going to do it down here. Yes, the events are independent. Okay. They have no effect on each other because when I multiply the probabilities, it's the same as when I do the and. All right, you get the same answer. So that means they are independent of each other. All right, in a geometric sequence, A2 is negative 12 and A3 is 36. So I'm going to do this one by kind of writing out the sequence. Okay, so A2 is negative 12 and A3 is 36. The reason I did this is because I want to find R. Well, they didn't give me the first term, but they gave me the second and third. All right, so how do I get from here to here? I multiply geometric, so it's going to be multiplication. There's a ratio, right? I multiply by negative 3. So R is negative 3. If you can't do that in your head, just divide them. 36 divided by negative 12, right? 36 divided by negative 12. That gives me negative 3. And then A1, you just go backwards, so divide that. Negative 3, you should get 4. So A1 equals 4. And just test it out. All right, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 3 is 36, so on and so forth. Write the explicit formula. The explicit formula is going to be An equals A1, which is 4, times R to the N minus 1. I think we've done this enough. You guys are getting good at this. The recursive formula, got to have A1. A1 equals 4. And then An equals the ratio, negative 3, times A sub N minus 1. That is the recursive formula for the sequence. Find the sum of the first 14 terms. We've got to use our sum formula. S14. Go to your reference sheet. It's on your reference sheet. A1 minus A1 R 
to the n, n is 14, over 1 minus r. All right? And we put that in our calculator. Make sure you put this in parentheses. If you're doing it all at once, that's got to go in parentheses. Always implied parentheses on top and bottom. Always. All right. And that comes out to be negative 4, 7, 8, 2, 9, 6, 8. Make sure you're doing this, guys. Please. You're just copying. You're really hurting yourself. You really are. Of the light bulbs available at a store, 42% are fluorescent, 23% are long life, and 12% are both. So we have fluorescent, we have not fluorescent, and then we have long life, and we have not long life. You got to have one event across the top and one event on the on the side, and the knot with the knot. All right. So forty-two percent are fluorescent. That's the fluorescent total. Point four two. Twenty-three are long life. That's the long life total. And fluorescent and the and is these boxes here. 12% fluorescent and long life, that's 0.12, that goes here. So now I know this is one point, the total is always 1.0. Everything's got to add up to one, the rows and columns got to add up to 1.0. All right, to probability always adds up to one. So this is 0.3, right, 0.3, that adds up to 0.42. This has got to be 0.58. This has got to be 0.11. This has got to be 0.47, and this has got to be 0.77. Just got to make sure everything adds up across and down. Okay. A light bulb will be selected at random from the light bulbs at this store. So from all the light bulbs, pro find the probability the selected light bulb is not fluorescent. So not fluorescent, not fluorescent is right here, 0.58. So probability is 0.58 over 1, which is just 0.58. The selected light bulb is fluorescent given, given that it is labeled long life. Okay, so given long life, given long life, labeled fluorescent, 0.12 out of only 0.23 because it's given that it's labeled as long life. That comes out to be 0.52. So sometimes you're going to have to calculate these. Okay. So are the events fluorescent and long life independent? Justify using probabilities. Well, if the probability of fluorescent is 0.58 and the probability of fluorescent given long life, that was, that was this part right here, Probability of fluorescent is 0.58. Probability of fluorescent, given that it was long life, so we're only looking at these, that came out to be 0.52. Those are not equal, therefore it's not independent. All right? So uh, you could put probability of F does not equal the probability of F given L. Therefore, Uh, events are not independent, are not, not independent. Okay, so a couple different ways we've done uh, independent so far. That's not independent, independent, sorry. A um, couple different ways we did independence by the multiplication rule, which we did in the la uh, last page, and then by conditional probabilities. So there's one way to do it, and then the other page is the other way to do it. All right, last page here. Bang this out real quick. We got two more. After starting a new job, Hannah decides to deposit $200 each month into an account that pays 3% annual interest compounded monthly. Compounded monthly, but it's annual interest. 
3% annual. So I already know I got to do 0 0.03 divided by 12. That's going to be my I value. How many payments must Hannah make in order for the account to reach a value of 13,500? So the future value, that's the future value. AF, that's 13,500. R is the monthly payment, that's 200. One plus I. Now I is 0.03 divided by 12. It's 0 0.0025. 0 0.0025. So I'm just going to put that in 1.0025. 1 1.0025. 1 raised to the N. Now N is the total number of payments. That's what we're trying to find out. Right there. We don't know N. So raised to the n minus 1 over 0 0.0025. Now, we're trying to find the number of payments, which is an exponent. I'm already thinking logs. The reason I'm already thinking logs is because I'm trying to find an exponent. you got to keep that in your head, guys. Logarithm is a missing exponent. So you're going to need to use logarithms when the exponent is missing. So first thing I'm going to do here is divide out by 200. Just because I, it looks kind of ugly on both sides. And that's going to be 67.5. All right, so that's going to equal 1.0025 to the n. That's going to get ugly here. See, 67.5 equals 1.0025 to the n minus 1 over 0 0.0025. Now, I'm going to multiply by 0 0.0025. That's like getting a common denominator. Multiply, multiply. That cancels that right out. That's why I'm doing that. 0 0.16875. And that's going to be 1.0025 to the n and then minus 1 and then we got to add that 1. Okay. So I got 1.16825 1 equals 1.0025 to the n. That's the form I need to use logs. Now I can use logs. Log of 1.16825 1 divided by the log of 1.0025 and that comes out to be 63 that comes out to be 63 that's 63 payments all right last one a study was conducted in Queens County New York of all the cats and dogs that were brought into local animal shelters if they were fixed or not so here's the chart we're gonna fill in a hypothetical thousand table 73.5% of all animals that came to the shelter were dogs. So total of dogs, 735. 735 out of 1,000, out of 1,000. We're doing a hypothetical 1,000 table. 42.8% of the cats and dogs brought into the shelter were already fixed. So 428 total fixed. 10.7% were uh, brought in were cats that had not been fixed. Cats not fixed, 107. Now I could fit it, finish this. All right, could finish this, and I'm going to do it in green. So this could be 265. All right, this is going to be 158, 270, 465, 572. All right, just filling in the puzzle there. Based on your table, find each of the probabilities given that it's a cat. So given cat, we're only looking at the cats, guys. Only looking at the cats. Fixed. 158 out of 265 cats. Given cat. That is uh, 158 out of 265. 158 out of 265. 0.596. Oh, fractions is the lowest terms. Sorry, we're leaving it. 
Given dog. Given dog. So we're only looking at the dogs. Fixed. Uh, 270. 270 out of 735. And that does reduce down to 135 out of 214. Dog or not fixed. Okay, so dog is 735 out of 1,000. Plus not fixed is 572 out of 1,000. But then when you remember when you're doing or, you have to subtract the and. So I have to subtract dog and not fixed. Dog and not fixed, 465. I have to subtract that 465 because that's the dog and not fixed piece because they were counted twice. So let's think about that. In the 735, those 465 were counted in the 735 and the 572, 465 is also in that 572. So if we just add these, well, first of all, if we just add those, we're going to go over 1,000, which wouldn't make any sense. The reason we're going over 1,000 is because the 465 is counted twice. So we have to subtract that away. That's when you're doing or. All right, and that comes out to be 842 out of 1,000. And the last one is use probability to determine if the events are independent. So the, I'm going to do the probability of dog and then the probability of dog given fixed. All right, you could do, there's a lot of ways you could do this. A lot of ways you could do this. But um, that's, this is one way to do it. So probability of dog is 735 out of 1,000, so that's 0.735. And the probability of dog given fixed Given fixed is 428 and dogs, so it's right here, 270 over 428. This is 270 over 428, and that is 0.631. So because the probability of dog does not equal, probability of dog does not equal the probability of dog given fixed, okay? Probability of dog does not equal the probability of dog given fixed. Uh, these events are not independent. Okay, because of this reason right here. Because the probability of dog does not equal the probability of dog given fixed. All right, hope I explained decent enough. Hopefully you got something out of this video, and uh, good luck tomorrow.